Good afternoon to all. I would like to thank the audience for connecting to this educational webinar and also appreciate efficient support of the organizers of this webinar, Professor Maurizio Cutolo and Dr. Emanuele Gotelli from Earn Reconnect Education and Training Working Group. My name is Marzena Olesińska. I will moderate the meeting. I'm a coordinator of Earn Reconnect MCTD Disease Group. I'm a rheumatologist from Poland. And today we have the honor to guest two experts on M mixed connective tissue disease, MCTD, which are the members of Earn Reconnect MCTD Disease Group. Professor Paula Trigenese and Dr. Sylvia Ornowska. Next slide, please, Sylvia. Professor Paula Trigenese is an immunologist and lecturer in rheumatology at the Tor Vergata University Hospital in Rome, Italy. She obtained master degrees in rheumatology and pediatric immunology, also at the National Scientific Habilitation as Associate Professor in Rheumatology. Professor Trigianese is also a principal investigator for national and international registries and several clinical trials mainly related to rare rheumatological diseases. She is a coordinator of the hereditary NJ Dima Reference Center and the Rheumatologic Translational Unit at the Tor Vergata University Hospital in Rome. She is a professor of allergology, clinical immunology, and rheumatology, and at the School of Medicine of Tor Vergata University. Dr. Sylvia Ornowska is a rheumatology specialist in the Department of Connective Tissue Diseases of National Institute of Geriatric Rheumatology and Rehabilitation in Warsaw, Poland. She is a lecturer in rheumatology at Postgraduate Medical Education Center. Her interests focus on systemic connective tissue disease, especially MCTD and capillaroscopy examination. Next slide, please. And now I'd like to present some housekeeping notes. The webinar will be recorded and published on Iron Reconnect's website and on YouTube channel. For questions during the webinar, use the questions and answers session in the Zoom black bar or use the chat. Questions will be addressed to the speakers after the presentation. Starting to our content part of uh, the meeting, I'd like to say that looking at the growing knowledge of MCTD, we can follow 50 years of medicine progress. Paula, please. Yes, thank you. Just a moment. Okay, can you confirm the sharing is okay? Yeah, okay. Thank you everyone and uh, good afternoon. Uh, my talk focus on uh, the, um, the clinical overview over the years in MCTD, discussion and the evolution of the clinical criteria in MCTD. While in the second part, my colleague Silvia will focus on the diagnostic step across the years to date. Oh. MCTD, as we know, is a complex disease uh, with the overlapping features from systemic sclerosis, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, systemic lupus erythematosus, in patients with the specific autoantibodies, I mean antibodies against the U1 small nuclear ribonucleal particles. MCTD was first described in 1972 as a disease syndrome with overlapping features, but it became the first rheumatic disease syndrome to be defined by a serologic test, the U1 antibodies. 
Fandom City B over the years has been recognized as an independent disease entity because of specific, specific organ involvement, in particular pulmonary arterial hypertension, aseptic meningitis, central geminal neuropathy. But over the years, there has been a continuing debate as to whether an CTD constitutes a distinct clinical entity. This is the first description in 1972, and the authors highlighted the importance of the high titles of speculated patterns of fluorescent antinuclear antibody and the no detectable anti Smith antibodies in these patients, and other, along with other important feature that is the high prevalence of hyperglobal lumbinemia and anemia and leukopenia, the rarity of the renal and central nervous system involvement, and the good responsiveness to steroid and wound prognosis. Here you can see the four different diagnostic criteria from the shop in 1987 to come in 1991. And in all these diagnostic criteria, you can see that the anti U1 RNAP antibodies constitute an anti criterion along with the other major criteria and minor criteria with common symptoms and mixed symptoms. And these criteria are different in in terms of sensitivity and specificity, so the Kazukawa criteria is the most sensitive, so they can be used to screen patients and to rule out the disease, while Alacon Segovia and Kan criteria have the maximum specificity, so they can be used to rule in the disease. But as you can see in the table, patients fulfilling criteria for MCTD also may fulfill criteria for other CTDs, mainly ZLI or for rheumatoid arthritis. So the high risk for the misdiagnosis for patients with MCTD remains. In 2019, the consensus panel introduced for the first time the characteristic organ involvement as a specific domain diagnostic criteria. Again, the pulmonary arterial hypertension, the aseptic meningitis, and the two geminal neuropathy that along with common manifestation and immunological manifestation can lead the diagnosis. In the absence of the characteristic organ involvement, at least one common, at least one common manifestation with immunological manifestation, and at least one feature each in two or more from items A, B, and C in overlapping manifestation have to be addressed for the diagnosis. Authors also highlighted the importance to be careful and to pay great attention in patients that also showed other autoantibodies, in particular anti-Smith and strain DNA. But uh, over the years, the view on MCTD remained contradictory, and the degree of the association between RNP and the MCTD remained unresolved. So, the utility of the anti RNP antibodies also constitute a diagnostic challenge because of more than half of patients with this kind of antibodies can also meet criteria for other CTD, mainly sleep. So, the presence of a scleroderma feature, scleroderma pattern, is the main factor that is significantly associated with the established diagnosis of MCTD that remains stable during the years, during the course of the disease. Several follow up studies showed that many patients who received a diagnosis of MCTD evolved in other CTD mainly scleroderma osli. But 10 years ago, Capelli et al. in a large court um, described that more than half of patients who received a diagnosis of a defined MCTD remain classifiable as affected by MCTD. And this supports the existence of MCTD as a distinct entity. In particular, several clinical features 
mainly when of phenomenon, arthralgia or arthritis of swollen hands, along with the distinct oat antibody anti UNFP, persists through the course of the years in patients with a stable disease of a defined MCPD. Nevertheless, MCPD is a distinct entity with a specific organ involvement, and among them, sure to geminal neuropathy is characteristic. Is bilateral, is a very good response to cell therapy. So, in patients with atypical trigeminal neuropathy, the presence of anti NFP antibody has been ruled out in order to make a diagnosis of undiagnosed MCTD possible. Concerning the pulmonary hypertension, recent evidence highlighted that. Pulmonary hypertension is a rare but very severe complication in MCTD, affecting dramatically the prognosis of patients. Authors highlighted also that pericarditis, polyarthritis, thrombocytopenia, interstitial lung disease, and non-smitted antibodies are independent predictive factors for pulmonary hypertension in MCTD. And the pulmonary hypertension in FCTD, together with digital ulcers and renal phenomenon, belong to the cluster one, a specific cluster of MCTD phenotype, a vascular cluster that have the worst prognosis with respect to a cluster, mainly joint cluster, the cluster three, for example, here, or the cluster with the predominant lung disease, with interstitial interstitial lung disease. And a few minutes about the interstitial lung disease, because the, pre because the prevalence of interstitial lung disease is estimated to be about uh, 30%, 40% uh, of patients with MCTD. And if you can see that interstitial lung disease is mainly NCIP interstitial lung disease, is very rare, the UIT or the OIP or other pattern of interstitial lung disease, no parenchymal nodus, no pleural disease, but a vascular disease, of course, with the association with immune complexes, consumption of C3, and also with, the, obviously, the anti-U1 RNP autoantibodies. And the recent evidence also lie that can be identified factors associated with interstitial lung disease in MCD fashion, for example, the older age, the skin disease, I mean the skin thickening, the upper gastrointestinal symptoms, but also cryoglobulinemia and elevated CRP. Moreover, authors uh, highlighted that digital ulcers are risk factor for lung function and that during the follow-up period in the study, mortality resulted to be higher in patients with MCTD and interstitial lung disease. And how about the pediatric patients? In pediatric age, the big challenge is to differentiate MCTD young patients from um, patients with overlapping manifestation. And recent evidence highlighted that patients with SLEE-like features, scleroderma-like features, are more prominent than CTD with respect to patients with overlap manifestation, in which is predominant the arthritis or the polydermatomyositis. And here you can see the difference between the MCTD young patients or young patients with overlapping CTDs, in particular sclerodactyly or digital ulcers, or again renal involvement or renal phenomenon that are prevalent in MCTD group. And in MCTD young patients, the ZLE phenotype is the predominant phenotype at the onset of the disease, while the scleroderma phenotype is the predominant phenotype during the follow-up of the disease. So in pediatric age, MCTD is a very rare, but is a very severe disease. And the lack in this age is today the, the, that the long-term outcome data are missing because of definition of inactive disease in the remission in MCTD to date are not uniform. So the debate remains unresolved. 
Firstly, because of the presence of anti U1 and anti antibodies are um, prevalent also in other defined and CTD. But also because uh, no consensus to date has been reached on to what extent pathological changes are included in the concept of MCTD and whether the overlapping manifestations of other defined CTD, meaning sleep and then CTD, are acceptable today. Now I can uh, leave the second part of the webinar to Sylvia to unravel uh, the, the steps of the diagnosis in MCTD. Thank you for your attention. Voice, please. Voice, please. Thank Can you. you hear me? Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, in summary, there are uh, still controversies over the nature of MCTD. Uh, since MCTD was first described in 1972, uh, there has been a debate as to whether MCTD is indeed a separate disease entity or whether it is an overlapping syndrome of several disease entities, or maybe it is a preliminary stage for disease that are part of MCTD. Mm. Uh, there are many pros and cons for existence of MCTD uh, as a distinct disease entity. Uh, more than 50% uh, of MCTD patients uh, maintain their initial clinical and serological uh, features and remain classified as MCTD. Uh, U1 RNP antibody uh, persists throughout the course of disease. Patient, uh, patient, patient demonstrate the typical immunogenetic clinical and serologic findings of MCTD, as uh, Paula mentioned uh, previously. And MCTD has a uh, genetic distinctiveness uh, of MCTD. Um, uh, these evidences strongly support the hypothesis that MCTD is a distinct entity. Uh, five uh, different classification and diagnostic criteria were discussed at the big, beginning of the presentation. Uh, reviewing these criteria, uh, we can see a lot of similarities. Uh, Raynaud's phenomenon, myositis or swollen hands and sclerodactyly, positivity to anti-U1 RNP um, are part uh, of each one. Um, previously, uh, uh, Paula uh, mentioned about uh, Tanaka's criteria. Uh, it has new domain uh, added, which contain characteristic uh, organ involvement associated with MCTD. Uh, uh, since MCTD was first described, there are uh, still a lot of unmet needs for uh, patients and also for specialists. Uh, most cases of long-term disease have a chronically active curse. Uh, we can see on this uh, diagram that uh, after uh, 16 years of disease, uh, about two-thirds of patients uh, showed active disease uh, course. Um, quality of life is reduced in MCDD patients. In our study, we showed that uh, quality of life of MCDD patients is uh, significantly reduced in all domains is as uh, SF36 questionnaire compared to healthy group. In this diagram, uh, we, can, uh, we can see it. Uh, MCTD is marked in gray. Um, the main uh, causes of death in MCTD are acute disease, complications, and comorbidities uh, like uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension or uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome, uh, and also uh, infection uh, uh, comorbidities like infections and cardiovascular uh, events. Uh, 
uh, fatigue is a serious uh, problem uh, for uh, patients with uh, MCTD. In our study, KFS questionnaire was assessed in 69 uh, patients with median score of 4.6, uh, comparing with a uh, healthy group. Um, NCTD patients uh, achieved higher score in questionnaire. In healthy group, uh, median score was 2.3. Additionally, in another study, severity of uh, fatigue in MCTD was comparable to SLE and multiple sclerosis. Uh, most affected uh, by fatigue areas, according to MCTD patients, were uh, decreased motivation, difficulties with physical functioning, and severity of fatigue of physical activity. Um, in about 30% per, uh, of MCTD patients, a Sjodren syndrome uh, was recognized. And the severity of uh, fatigue in MCTD is greater in MCTD with secondary Sjodren syndrome. Uh, approximately 30% of patients has a higher score in KFSS comparing to the group of patients without uh, secondary Sjodren syndrome. Uh, in conclusion, uh, 50 years of MCTD was a time of increasing our uh, knowledge uh, uh, about, about uh, CTDs. It was a time of improvement uh, disease diagnostic, uh, diagnostic tools. Uh, it was uh, also a time of interesting uh, studies. And 50 years of MCTD was... Uh, time of gathering people around a uh, rare disease. Thank you, and I'm sorry for complications. Uh, thank you, uh, Paola. Thank you, Silvia, uh, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, uh, I'd like to check if we got any questions from the audience, but not yet. Maybe uh, Maybe somebody from the present uh, uh, people wants to wants to ask. I'm uh, I'm fond of uh, MCTD. I uh, when I uh, studied the uh, history of this disease, uh, it was uh, uh, so uh, so interesting to know uh, and to to. Um, uh, learn uh, the development of methods, the development of knowledge, uh, knowledge of uh, of this disease, uh, and uh, I'd like to um, share with you uh, a, a sentence um, uh, said by by Gordon Sharp um, in uh, his publication uh, in Lupus uh, twenty uh, oh uh, nine. Uh, he said, uh, the nature of the uh, MCTD poses many challenges for researchers and is stimulating the development of autoimmune disease research. So I think that this is a, a new opening for our uh, new initiatives, our new research. Uh, it's really very interesting uh, disease for us. Thank you very much. So I'd like to, we have one question. Uh, what about uh, epidemiology in different countries? Do you do you like to maybe Paula? Uh, do you like to uh, answer for this issue? Epidem about uh, what about epidemiology in different countries? Epidemiology in different countries. Oh, different countries. Uh, MCTD is uh, present worldwide, and uh, the estimate of the prevalence is best in. Uh, that is prevalent in females than males and in adolescents, young adults than older age. But uh, I don't know if there is a specific uh, difference in the prevalence across countries. Do you know something else, Madeleine? 
I think that we can uh, know about it. Maybe uh, now with this, uh, um, our common uh, common uh, research on MCTB, maybe we'll get uh, more about about epidemiology, about the prevalence in each country. We'll see, and uh, creation the registries also uh, tells us more about it. Okay. We have more questions. Uh, it's an a specific randomized clinical trial for MCTD patients ongoing? No. It was, it was, it was yes. One, yes, one clinical trial. Uh, but now there isn't any clinical trials for MCTD. I'm looking for this, uh, but there isn't. So we don't know about the ongoing trials. So if there is um, no more questions, neurological, oh, I see. Um, no, thank you for from Laura and Raleigh. Congratula uh, congratulations for the nice webinar. Um, what do you think are the main challenges in research for the next 10, 15 years? We have a lot of plans, a lot of ideas. There's a lot to do in MCTD. Paula, do you want to, to see from your, uh, to say something from your perspective? From my perspective, the main challenge in MCTD can be the definition of uh, remission and its activity in the specific uh, connective tissue disease to elaborate a specific score of this activity that can be uniform uh, the court uh, study across the several studies uh, so that it can lead to uh, compare results also in, from different countries. And um, I think that also I can see the, the, the other a question on the neurological and pain. I think that also pain, fatigue, and neurologic impact in MCPD can be a, um, a challenge for the future in this kind of uh, disease. Uh, mainly in, uh, in women. is a disease that affected many women. So the item of the, the, the fatigue, the pain, the impact on the quality of life is particularly relevant. And I think we need tools for this uh, for this disease. We need some uh, scales of activity of uh, damage. Yeah. It's very important for us to assess and to compare the patients, to, to compare the population from various countries. It's mm -hmm. very important. Um, uh, so uh, uh, we should uh, we should use. Uh, maybe uh, our registries it will be easier but there's uh, not not they are not uh, created uh, frequently in in each country uh, but uh, indeed we we have a lot to do and and we are happy that we can that that uh, that's possible uh, maybe a question for sylvia please uh, which organ involvement screening exams uh, should uh, we perform a diagnosis? Which organ involvement screening exams should we perform a diagnosis? Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a question. I, I think that yes. um, uh, we should look for, for example, lung disease. Uh, because it's a serious uh, involvement for patients and also pulmonary arterial hypertension. A digestive tract. 
Yes, um, it is uh, also it is not often that it's also serious uh, complication for patients, and they don't want to say about it. Uh, yes. Uh, what about neurological impacts? Is there um, anything about this neurological impact? Maybe Paula, you said about this yes. uh, trigeminal uh, neuropathy. Yeah, trigeminal neuropathy that is a characteristic that because it is bilateral, it has a good, very good response to steroids, uh, and uh, with a high level of suspicion, we can also check for uh, uh, MCTD in patients with a typical trigeminal neuropathy. Um, uh, concerning other. Uh, type of neurological involvement, uh, I mean also some clinical involvement like uh, uh, neurodegenerative or uh, um, uh, um, vascular damage at the brain level. I think that uh, it can be useful to search some clinical damage in LCTD also. Um, maybe with the study of uh, intra intracranial um, circulation at the vascular uh, network uh, in the retina also uh, in an optic nerve uh, uh, that can be explored uh, in also in a non-invasive way uh, so it can be applicable also at the beginning of the diagnosing uh, diagnosis sorry and during the follow-up and in the neurological manifestation, maybe we can also include the headache, so the migraine uh, related, the migraine related impact of the quality of life that may affect women in the fertile age, so also women affected with the MCTD. Thank you. And the next. Uh, asked by uh, Vera, Vera Gimaires. Hello, Vera. What about pain? Uh, what happens uh, in MCTD that brings pain in so many patients? It was mentioned before about pain, about uh, uh, yeah. fatigue, yes. And um, also, I think the sleep disturbance. Uh and uh, other item of this uh, pain related uh, affecting the quality of life. So also I think the burden for a diagnosis that can be undiagnosed for several years, for example. The burden of the absence of the diagnosis. Yes. And uh, maybe uh, Silvia, you can explain this. Uh, causes uh, causes for having the disease, uh, like pathogenesis. Is there a hypothesis causes for having the disease? What, uh, what pathogenics? What path pathogenics factor are uh, thought that? Uh, there are uh, genetic factors in MCTD, uh, but also. also viruses, hormones, uh, in pathogenetic of disease, uh, more uh, women than men uh, have MCTD, uh, and also a hormones uh, cause of disease. And uh, we don't know a lot. But we don't know we... a lot about this, yes. Uh, but uh, and there was, uh, you remember, the, there was a model of pathogenesis prepared. Uh, um, maybe it's uh, uh, um, it was prepared by by uh, Hoffman, Professor Hoffman from USA, and uh, it was uh, uh, a development of the disease uh, with the presence of uh, anti RNP antibodies. Uh, with um, uh, interstitial um, uh, lung disease, yes, yes, it was it was stimulated, it was uh, induced uh, by the presence, but uh, by by the presence of of these uh, the uh, antibodies. But it's also important 
why uh, this uh, autoimmunity uh, is, uh, is starting? We don't know yet. We, we think that similarly, like in other connective tissue diseases, so this genetic background, uh, maybe uh, environmental factors, uh, it isn't proved yet. Infections, viral infections, uh, epi, epigenetic influences, yes. Uh, thank you. And I'll check uh, again from Vera. <laughs> thank you. Very nice work and presentation. So uh, thank you. Thank you, the speakers, uh, for for a very nice talk, interesting presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, the audience, uh, for your time. Uh, and uh, we think that uh, we should talk about MCTD. This is rare disease, but very interesting and disease with a lot to do. Thank you uh, very much. And please uh, follow Elna Connet for future webinars. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, Thank you very much.